Hi guys, welcome back to another video tutorial. So before I go any further, I just want to say Happy New Year to each and every one of you and I hope that you guys had a great holiday and a great break and now you're coming back and uh, you're coming back and I know it's, it feels like Ugh, I don't want to go back to school and that, all that kind of feeling. It's, it's normal and um, it's natural. But one thing I just want to say is uh, for those of you who have the summer exams or your GCSE exams or end of year exams coming up in the summer, um, don't leave anything to the last minute. Now is the time to kind of, okay, organize. Say Monday, I'm going to do geography. Tuesday, I'm going to do science. Uh, Wednesday, I'm going to do maths. You know, Thursday, I'm going to do English. Prioritize your time and put time on each of your subjects. Don't put too much time on one subject and leave little time on another subject every subject that you guys are doing is important and will take into will be taken into consideration as well so what i would say is don't leave anything to the last minute stop you know organizing your time it's very important now you know you have about four months four and a half months till your to your exams and you just don't want to be you know coming up at the end you know at the end of the exams or come up the results day realizing damn i should have revised more or i should have put more time you don't want that regret it, it's it's not it's not a nice feeling and it's not it's not pleasant at all so put the time now and start really putting in hard work and see you see the way i think about it is i'm just going to work hard for four and a half months and then you can relax you got the whole summer okay so why don't you put the work now put the effort now and then you can take all the time you want to relax okay so in today's tutorial what we'll be going over through is um inequalities but if you looked at the previous video tutorials you might have seen a pattern that we were looking for we were looking at positive inequalities but the question now is how do we solve a negative inequality and this is what we're going to be covering today now if you're not quite sure on how to do inequalities I'm going to put the link in the description, not in the link in the description, the link in the top right hand corner of your screen on the previous two video tutorials for you guys to go and check out. Okay, so let's get straight to the tutorial. Um, or should I say the question? Find the set of values of x for this uh, question. So this is 10 plus x minus 2x squared smaller than 0. So the first thing that I'm going to do, okay, do not worry about this sign. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write 10 plus x minus 2x squared is equals to 0. Okay, so take the smaller sign and put that to equals. Okay, now what I'm going to do, because you see you see there is a negative x squared, so you know that this is going to be a negative graph. So for those of you who don't know what a negative graph will look like, so you should know first, okay, a positive x squared graph looks like this, right? So this is y, uh, y is equal, no, that's y is equals to x squared okay now a negative what is okay and a negative so this is y equals x squared and a negative x squared graph is going to look like this okay so again i'm not being very accurate here i'm just kind of showing you this shape a negative x squared graph okay but really should be oh, okay fine Let, let's do it this way so negative x squared graph, okay, it's going to look like that, so upside down, okay, don't worry too much about where it's going in the y-axis, that doesn't matter right now, just, you, you should know, okay, positive, negative, right, so I know it's, my shape is going to be like this, okay, so what I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to bring all of this to the other side, to the right-hand side, because the point is I want to get rid of this negative x squared. I want this to be positive. So if I move this minus 2x squared to that side, it becomes positive 2x squared. But then I have to move the x as well to that side, so that now becomes minus x. And this plus 10 now becomes minus 10 equals 0. And remember, we need to find the value of x. Now, if you're not quite, if you remember, or if you're not quite sure, should I say if you, no, if you don't remember, if you're not quite sure, what this looks like it's factorizing but this is a long factorizing method so again if you're not quite sure on how to do that I'll, i will put the link in the top right hand corner right now to how to do this factorizing how to factorize an equation like this so make sure you go check it out if you don't know how to do it okay so the way i'm going to factorize this i want two numbers when i multiply gives me minus 20 because i'm doing two times minus 10 and i want two numbers when i add gives me well, it's x, which is 1, but there's a minus, so it's going to be minus 1. So my two numbers, when I multiply, gives me minus 20, and add gives me minus 1. I know that minus 5 
plus 4 gives me minus 1. And I also know that minus 5 times 4 gives me minus 20. Now all I'm going to do is I'm going to bring 2x squared here. So let me bring 2x squared here. And then bring the 4 and the 5 here. But because this is positive 4, I'm going to have plus 4, but then add an x. And then the same thing with minus 5. So it's minus 5, but add an x. So minus 5x. And then minus 10 equals 0. Now, what's in common between this? 2x is in common. So I'm factorizing that. So I'm left with x plus 2. And here, what's in common here? Minus 5 is in common. So I'm left with x plus 2 equals 0. Now, what I do is bring this in one bracket. So 2x plus 5 equals 0 and then bring the other okay you should say we should say like this actually 2x plus 5 in one bracket and then x plus 2 in the other bracket equals 0 so this one 2x plus 5 equals 0 so that means x is equals to minus 5 over 2 that's one solution and then x plus 2 equals 0 so x is equals to minus 2 Okay, so these are your two values or your two solutions. Now, obviously, if you're not sure how to do this factorizing method, definitely go check the video tutorial out or else you can't solve this question. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the graph, right? So, okay, let's, let me draw the graph. So, what we'll do is now, because now we need to find the set of values, right? So, okay. I have my two solutions here, minus 5 over 2 and minus 2. Again, you don't need to be accurate. So is it minus 5 over 2? Yeah. So minus 4. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, I've made a little mistake here. Can you spot where I've made the mistake and see where I've gone wrong? It's just a silly mistake I just realized as well. Do you guys, can you guys see that? So it basically, it's, this should be 2x minus 5. Yeah. So this should be minus 5. So what I'll do, actually, let me just rub this bit off again. So everything is right. It's just what happened there is I it should have been 2x minus 5. Okay, so that will be 2x minus 5 and then x plus 2. Okay, equals 0. So basically, one of your solution is going to be x is equals to 5 over 2 and then the other one x equals minus 2. Okay, okay, that's better. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to put these solutions on the graph. So 5 over 2 is going to be somewhere here. It's so a positive. So I'm just going to put that as 5 over 2. Let me write that somewhere here. 5 over 2. And then the other one, minus 2. So minus 2 is going to be somewhere here. Now, remember, your graph, because this is a negative x squared, it's going to be this way. So basically, you want the graph that goes through the two points. Again, don't worry where it intersects it. As long as the graph is going through these two points, that is it. Okay? Now, what you need to see here is... So, hopefully, first that makes you understand what, what I'm doing here. Because this is a negative graph, I'm going upside down. And if it was a positive, it would be like a smiley face. Now, if you look at the sign here, this means smaller than zero. So, I know that this zero is here, right? Smaller than zero would just basically mean everything below the zero, isn't it? That's where your region you want, the region that you're looking for, everything that's below zero. So then my answer, if I look at this 5 over 2, if you, what is happening to my x value? So obviously this is your x value, yeah? And then this is your y value. What is happening to my x value, which is this line, as this line is going this way? So you can see the x value is going this way, this way, this way. So you can see it's increasing. So what I can say is my x is greater than 5 over 2 which is one solution. Now, if we look at minus 2 here, what is happening to my x value? So, obviously, your x value is going to go this way as this line is going here or this way. You can see that your x value is decreasing because keep, it keeps going this way as this line is going this way. So, what we can say is x is smaller than minus 2. And that is your solution for this, kind of, for this question. So, really, the principle is the same, right? The only difference is your graph you should know that, okay, negative x squared graph means it's going to go upside down. And then everything else is the same thing. You just look at the sign and then you see how to, you know, where you're, the region that you're interested in. And that's pretty much it, okay? If there's any questions, any doubts, 
that you didn't understand from this tutorial, put it down in the comment section and I will reply back. And now what I will do is give you another a question for you guys to try out and see if you can um, do it. Right, so try and do this question, see if you can do it. And um, what I would say is, well, I guess pause the video, try out, and then play the video back again and then see if you have the answer or not. Okay? So find the cell values of x for 3 minus 5x minus 2x squared is smaller than 0. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going we're going to write 3 minus 5x minus 2x squared and then bring that smaller sign into or change it into equals 0. Now bring everything to one side. So you have a positive. So 2x squared plus 5x minus 3 equals 0. Okay. Now you know this is a negative x squared graph so you know your shape is going to go like that. Okay. So now what we're going to do is factorize. So I want two numbers when I multiply gives me minus 6 because I'm doing 2 times minus 3 and two numbers when I add gives me 5. Okay. So the two numbers when I times gives me minus 6 and add gives me 5 is 6 and minus 1. So 6 and minus 1. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring those two numbers that I found and add x to them. So 2x squared plus 6x and then minus 1 which is just minus x minus 3 equals 0. Now we're going to factorize this. So to what's in common between 2x squared plus 6x that's 2x and then you have x plus 3 and then the, what's in common between minus x minus 3 is just going to be minus 1. So that's just going to be x plus 3 is equals to 0. Now if we bring this in one bracket, so that's going to be 2x minus 1 in one bracket. That's, and x plus 3 in another bracket equals 0. So one solution is 2x minus 1 equals 0. So x is, equal, x is going to be equals to half. And then the other one is x plus 3 is equals to 0. So the solution for this one would be x is equals to minus 3. Okay. Now if we were to draw the graph now, again, this is not accurate, but okay. So if we were to draw the graph, okay, this is going to be your y coordinate and this is going to be your x coordinate. You have a solution there, which is minus 3. So minus 3 is going to be somewhere here. So put minus 3 here. Actually, let me write that inside. So that's going to be minus 3. And then the other one is half. So that's going to be positive half. Now, because you know this is a negative x squared graph, I know that my shape is going to be a sad face, if you like, that goes through the two points. Okay? Now, the final step that I have to do is I need to look at the sign. Because it says it's smaller than 0, it means this is the region, everything above or below the 0 is where is what I want. Okay. So now my final value is if I look at this x equals half, oh, x half, x when x equals half, what's happening to my line as this, what's happening to my x value as this line is going this way, my x value is increasing. So one of my solutions is x is greater than half. Now if you look at, if I look at minus three, what is happening to my x value as it, this line is going this way, x is decreasing. So x is smaller than minus three. Okay, so if you've got this as your answer, well done. And if you haven't, just look at the method and see where you went wrong. And again, if you're still not sure where you went wrong, just put it down in the comments and I will reply back to you.